those who are walking in the flesh away identify yourself with the church organization and receive a covering of the church you are not living according to the standard of the kingdom and the principles of the holy spirit for the promises i have made to bless you is through isaac and not through the men who's living carnal lives be careful what you produce agai versus sarah ismail versus isaac Good morning everyone. Welcome to live stream and greetings to you from Taromo. We are so glad and so proud that you are able to listen to what's coming out from this place to you out there in the nations all around the world. Welcome to the session this morning. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting session and the title of this session this morning is called Agai versus Sarah and Isaac versus Ismail. And it's very interesting. So I'm so excited to see how the Spirit of God is going to lead us with this session. Let me read you a scripture this morning. I'm reading verse 21. Tell me you who desire to be under the law do you not bear ear the law for it is written that abram had two sons now that's important abram had two sons the one by a bond woman and the other by a free woman a bond woman is a slave woman so abram had two sons one born of the born women or slave women, which is a guy, and one from the free women, which is Sarah. But he was of the born women, that's Ismail, was born according to the flesh, and he of the free women through the promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai which gives birth to bondage, which is Agai. For this Agai is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem which now is and is bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem is about free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than see you as a husband. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are, are children of promise. But as he was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. So the son who was born of the slave women, born women, persecuted the son who was born of the free women, which is Isaac. Both of these women are Abraham's wife. But one wife is a free woman and the other wife is a slave woman. And they both gave birth to two sons, Ismail and Isaac. Ismail born of Agai from the slave women, and Isaac born of the free women, which is by the word and by the promise. So, the son of the bond women, the slave women, persecuted, gave a hard time, to the son who was born of the free women was born of the promise through the word of God. But as he was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. Even so it is now. Even so it is now. 
The same thing is now taking place today. People who are born of the word of God, born of the spirit of God, who are living in spirit and walking according to God's perfect will, who embrace the will of God, and have nothing to do with the flesh. So does people who are living in the flesh, whom they call themselves Christians, they are persecuting the ones who are living in the spirit. Yet they are both born from Abraham and both Abraham's wife. So even now, the same thing is taking place. Spiritual man is being attacked by carnal men who call themselves Christians. Nevertheless, what does, does the scripture say? Cast away the bone women and their son. Get them out of my house. And Abraham is going before God. Ismail is my son. Isaac is also my son. They are both born from me. And I hate to see Ismail fight against Isaac and Isaac against Ismail right in front of my house. So, Lord, what shall I do? And the Lord is answering Abraham. Send the women with Ismail and Agai away from my house because all that I have promised you, will, I will fulfill it through Isaac and not through Ismail. <laughs> Hello? For those who are living in the flesh cannot dwell together with those who are living in the spirit in the same house. Because their interests are different, their lifestyles are different, their languages are different, their thought patterns are different, their lifestyles are different, their arts are different. The spiritual men would like to walk in God's perfect will to please the Father. And carnal men in the church would love to walk according to their own wishes and want to entertain their own human reasoning and that becomes their lifestyle so two of them cannot walk together in the same house of the Lord. So the Lord is telling him, what shall I do? Because they are born from the same father. They are born from the same church, same ministry, same pastor. They are born from the same organization. They are born from the same place, life in the spirit, any organization. So what shall I do? And the Lord said, cast those who are walking in the flesh away. For the promises I have made to bless you is through Isaac and not through the man who is living carnal lives. The blessings, the inheritance that I'm going to give you is through the promised child, one who is born of the word of God. One who is born through the word of God. So cast it away. Abraham was grieved because Agai became his wife and Ismail became his son. But you know Abraham, he obeys God. He loves God more than his sons and whoever. So he sent and cast a guy and his smile away. When he cast them away, he freed his house from conflictions within the house. So there was no confliction. There are now no two sons fighting for father's inheritance. The way is now cleared for God to channel his blessings through his promised child 
and there is no kernel born of a bond woman son to share the inheritance of Abraham. So there is no fighting with him. This is what the Lord Jesus said in John 15. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. He who does not bear fruit, it takes away. Fruitless people, carnal people, who act and talk as if they are living in the spirit and become part of an organization or a church. Today, as I am speaking this, as I am preaching this, God is on the move to cast them out of his place. He will bring trouble upon their lives. He will do all kinds of things to make sure that he cuts them off from his presence. Carnal people are not needed in the church of God because they will stay in the church of God and begin to inflict, begin to bring confusion, begin to speak against and attack those who want to walk and live in the spirit. They will come and close themselves, hide themselves under one covering and act as if they are spiritual, but with their mouths and actions, they will try to influence those who are walking in the spirit to come to their side and support their carnal ways. You cannot put God and the devil in one place. You will never get a spiritual man and a carnal man to dwell together in your house. There will be conflicts, misunderstanding, misreading. Definitely, you are asking for gossips and backbiting. Why? The Bible tells me in Romans that a carnal man will never understand a spiritual man. A carnal man's judgments are purely human judgments according to human ideas and ideologies. And he will base his ideas and judgments and try to walk in the ways of men. But a spiritual man will walk according to God's will, according to God's ways and God's thoughts. And he's careful to walk where he takes a step because he wants to make sure that he's walking in God's perfect will. He will apply discernment, sensitivity. He wants to know whether this is of God or this is of man or this is from my own idea or is a condition or situation is forcing me to make this decision. He will put everything to the light, bring them before God just like what Abraham did. He found these two sons of his fighting in the same house. And he says, Lord, what shall I do? They are both my sons. And the Lord said, send the bond women with his son away from the house. For all the promises that I have made to you to bless you will come through Isaac, the word child. Child was born of the promise. All the blessings of the Lord that are in the word of God and that God has promised through Christ Jesus, you will have them through a spiritual life. A life controlled by the Spirit, a life controlled by the Word of God, a life that is led and controlled by the Holy Spirit. You can't try to pick them through carnal ways in the church. And God will always be with those who are walking in the Spirit. God is a Spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. For God is seeking church to worship Him. God is not seeking carnal men to worship him. He is seeking spiritual men who walk in the spirit, who live in the truth to worship him. And if you give to God what he's looking for, hey, don't be surprised to see that you attract the God who is looking for such worship. God is not attracted by our looks and by our dressings and by you know, our nice little buildings and all that stuff. God is attracted by a men and women who walks in the spirit, lives in the spirit, who lives in truth. For God is seeking church to worship him. 
If you give to God what he's looking for, you will settle his heart. Because if somebody lost something, if one of you lost something, and you start looking for it, and then you get back what you lost, he'll be settled. He'll no longer go looking for it because he got what he was looking for. You settle that person. That man is settled. If you give to God what he's looking for, you will settle God. And as you settle him, don't be surprised that God can also settle you too. Galatians 5.16 says, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the spirit lusts against the flesh and flesh against the spirit and they are contrary to one another. Therefore you will not do what you wish to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Listen to this. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. That's what walking in the spirit can do for you. Listen to me now. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is the secret way? Not to fulfill the lust of the flesh? Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. I say walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We don't need to be sin conscious. We don't need to be law conscious. We need to be spirit conscious. And we need to be Christ conscious. Because once you are conscious of the spirit of God and the life of Christ Jesus, what happens is, as you walk with the Holy Spirit, it makes you live a holy life and you find yourself not sinning. Because you are only one person. You are not two. You are one human being. So when your spirit, your soul and your body is focused and controlled by the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit controls the one person and the one person is walking in the spirit so there is no other person in you, you are not two people you are one person, if the one is controlled by the spirit, then who in you will go and sin because the one in you is controlled by the Holy Spirit and there is no two in you for the devil to use you to go and sin that's why Paul knows this I say walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And they are contrary to one another. Which means the flesh hates the spirit. And the spirit hates the flesh. And they are both enemies. And they cannot submit to each other. You can't tell a spiritual man. You can't tell a spiritual man. A carnal man cannot tell a spiritual man. You come under me. You come under my program. Do what I want you to do. No. You can't tell a spiritual man to come under your program. Why? Because the ways of the Lord are higher. The man's ways. So how can you bring a man who is living high ways with God to bring him down men ways of men's ways of living? You can't. You are living purely like a human being. And this man is godly. So how can you bring a godly with eyes tended to bring to heavenly standard? No, you can't. You can't. Carnal men cannot control spiritual men. Carnal men cannot, you know, tell spiritual men to agree with him. They'll all disagree. Because the carnal man does things to please himself, entertain himself, make a name for himself, and do things that entertains his flesh. And what he sees in the human reasoning, what looks good in human understanding. But the Spiritual man is not interested in himself. He is always interested in to seek something and always seek those things that will please the Father. He has no personal agenda. The only one agenda that a spiritual man has is to please God and walk in his will. So two of them are different. Yet they can live in one house and come out from the bellies of Abraham. 
So they can be carnal men and spiritual men in the same church, in the same organization. And you'll find out that carnal men will speak against spiritual men and attack spiritual men in the same church. So you can see groupings, segregations, a team of people attacking another team of people. And carnal men will never understand spiritual men. Yeah. They will put their carnal eyeglasses, sunglasses, or head glasses, or mind glasses. I don't know what kind of glasses they put on. And when they see you, they don't see you as men of God, are men, women walking in the will of God, but they will see you through their own judgment on what they think is right and what they think that what you should do, and they have the list for you to tick for them. And all the time they want you to fit into their shoes. And if you don't fit into their shoes, they will try to attack you and gossip and form groups. Am I speaking to some people this morning? <laughs> So in the same church, same organization, you will have this kind of people. Remember, God's eye is on the spiritual people. Because the spiritual people have something that is looking for. That attracts his attention. Okay, one of the likely things that can take place in an organization or in a church especially is this. Carnal men who are Ishmaelites, born of Agai, can walk in their own ways and then they will invite the spiritual men to affirm and confirm and stamp and come to their side to walk with them so that they would look as if they are in the will of God. But the spiritual man knows that that's not in the will of God. So he won't agree. And when they don't do that, they try to come up with an opposition to attack the spiritual man. So you will gain people in the same church, same organization, to form a group to attack whomever opposing. And so he will form a team of the similar kind of spirit. And it will become infectious. And it will spread, the same kind of spirit will spread around and they form same team, they will eat together, they will speak, say things together and try to oppose spiritual men. Because Ishmael and Isaac were born from Abraham and they were in the same house. So they were, there was conflicting interest in the same house. So what they want is, they want a rubber stamp. So the men of God and those who are walking in the will of God, those who are living spiritual life, the carnal men who are living carnal lives will want the spiritual men to stem them. So they will feel comfortable. And they will look as if they are also doing it spiritually. But when this man descends, who is walking in the will of God, sees that they're carnal, so he refuses to attend to that, then he starts attacking. So Ishmael attacks Isaac. But Isaac is a man of the promise. Isaac is walking in the spirit. He's walking according to the word of God. He's pleasing God. So God is with him. What happened with Ishmael is that he will end up with worry, gossip, backbiting, hatred, jealousy, bitterness. He will live with that and chew that like a pig in his lifetime. And he can come to church with that kind of spirit. It can come from your family, come from your work, come from the church, come from any kind of organization within your family. This can happen. But you have to understand that spiritual men are not rubber stamps for carnal men. Which spiritual men or women here wants to become a rubber stamp for a carnal man? To approve carnal ways and carnal ways of men? No. No. We are born and trained by the word of God, by the spirit of God, to live for God. You can't become rubber stamp for carnal men. And carnal men will say, come this way, come this way. I'm doing this way, come and support me. 
And one of the great things that a spiritual man will do is he'll always discern. He will, he will never allow discernment to depart from his life. Because descent through discernment, he will say, no, this is of God, this is of men, this is of the devil. I will only come if it is in the will of God and I see my God in there. If I don't see my God in there, no, it's your show. I don't want to come and support your show. It's your show. I don't want to stamp your meeting. I don't want to stamp your, you know, what you're doing. So he will withdraw. And then the carnal man will say, he should have come. Why didn't he come? To him, discernment is not an issue. To him, righteousness is not an issue. To him, walking in the spirit is not an issue. To him, he wants everyone to approve what he's doing and become part of what he wants to do. That's the issue for a carnal man. But for a spiritual man, discernment, the will of God. You see, the will of God that I have to do this. So he goes by discernment. This one goes by his human understanding which becomes sweet to him. When God has promised you something and you have waited for the promise of God and when it does not show up, you say, well, he's not showing up. He told me this, but he's not coming. Let me help him. When Abraham and Sarah try to help God, they produce his man. Be careful when you're waiting for your promise. You might be looking for a man or a woman in desperate search for a lovely girl and a lovely boy. My goodness, I need him now. I need her right now. And you might be desperate. In your desperation, you went and picked up a guy and didn't wait for the promised one. After you got married to a guy, here comes the promised one. Oh, yo, I should have waited for this one here. Why? Well, live with a guy and face the consequences. The Lord might have told you, wait. I will do this for you. I will do this. He might have shown you in a vision. He might have shown you in a dream. He might have shown you. And you prayed and the Lord showed you and I showed you in your spirit that he will do this for you, do this for you. And you feel in your spirit. The timing is not right. But because of a pressing need, and the condition and the situation, you feel that you got to do something because of the need, because of the pressure, because of the conditions that are trying to kill you and get on you and pressurizing you. So you try to do something to help God out. Watch out, you're most likely to give birth to Ishmael. When it was the time for war, David should have gone and fought the battles with the kings. Because the Bible says it was time for the kings to go out and fight. But instead of going out to fight, he stayed in the house. Went up to the room of the house. So what did he do with the time? That time was budgeted for him to go and fight. Not budgeted for him to stay in the house and go to the rooftop. It was the season for the kings to fight. One king will come with his army and lead his army. You will have to go as a king to lead his army to fight. King and officers and army and commanders, they are all fighting with the king. But this king decided to stay back when it was the season and time for fighting. And because everyone is gone to fight, he's going to the house roof. And when he was in the house roof, uh, roof of the house, he looked down to see a beautiful lady, you know, washing a bathing. He was attracted. He said, go and get that woman. So he got that woman. A relationship with her. She bore a child. And you know the story. And so you can see while waiting. When you're supposed to be busy doing something. And when you are not doing what you're supposed to do. You're most likely to give birth to Ismail. Or commit adultery with Bezeba. 
in a church, an organization, when people who are not doing what they're supposed to do, walking in the spirit, doing things in the spirit, and when they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you will find out that they spend their times saying things that they don't need to say, doing things that they don't need to do, and fill their lives with the contamination of the world and the dust of the world, and their mouths and their minds are filled with the things of the world. When a man who is walking in the spirit wants to fill himself with the ways of God. And so the carnal versus the spiritual, Agai versus Sarah, Ismail versus Isaac, it's going on today. Be careful what you produce. Today, as of this word, you will find out God will cut off branches that are not producing. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. He who does not bear fruit, he takes away. And he who bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So today, the two things are taking place. Those who are connected to Jesus, who are walking in the spirit, producing fruits. God is pruning so that those who bear fruit will bear more fruit. And those who are not bearing fruit, living carnal lives, God is casting them away, cutting them off. Two things. Cut them off. He cast them away, cut them off. Cut the branches off. Remember the branches were part of the vine. And this is what Jesus said. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser, vine inspector. The one who comes and sees how the vine is growing. And he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts it. Every branch in me, that means you must be a born again man in Christ. But if you're not bearing fruit, what makes you, you do not bear fruit is you live in carnal lives and sinful life. And you're not bearing fruit. Nobody desires your lifestyle, your tongue, your lifestyle. Nobody admires you because you are speaking and living as if you're living in the world with the people of the world. But you identify yourself with a church organization and receive a covering of the church and feel comfortable with it. Yet you are not living according to the standard of the kingdom and the principles of the Holy Spirit. So listen very carefully. And the Lord Jesus said, cast it away. Prune them. So the casting away becomes a pruning. For those that are walking spiritual lives to bear more fruit. And when Abraham said, what shall I do with the two sons and the two wives? The Lord said, send the child with the bone, born from the bone women, both of them, away. Because the promises that I have made will be given and the blessings to Isaac. What kind of life are you living? Are you living a lifestyle where Christ will cut you off from him? Or where God will tell Abraham to send you away? Grow well in the house of the Lord. Walk in the spirit. Do not fulfill the last of the flesh. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. If you walk in the spirit and those who worship in the spirit are controlled by the spirit and live in truth are the kind of people God is looking for all over the world today. If you live that lifestyle, you will attract God to your doors. Have a wonderful week and we we'll see you at the same time next week on Sunday.